All right, in this video, we're going to talk about zero and negative exponents. Okay, if we look at this first example, we can see that we have um, a ratio or a fraction here with some exponential expressions in it. Um, on the top of this fraction, the numerator, we have the base of 2 with an exponent of 4 or 2 to the 4th power. In the denominator, also 2 to the 4th power. Uh, this translates, if we use the division rule, which is subtract the exponents into a base of 2 with 4 minus 4 as the exponents, or 2 to the 0 power, because 4 minus 4 is 0. What does 2 to the 0 power mean? And that's what we're going to talk about this. If you look at this a little bit further down, the explanation says there are four 2s multiplied in the numerator and four 2s multiplied in the denominator. Of course, we know that we can reduce or cancel any of those twos off. Uh, but when we do that, it doesn't make zero. These will all make ones. So what we really have is one times one times one times one or one. So it follows that two to the zero power equals one. The actual rule is any number or variable to the zero power equals one. And it looks like we have another example down here. So here we have negative 5 to the 0 power. Any number to the 0 power equals 1. So this equals 1. On this page, we have a whole bunch of exponents, uh, examples using the 0 exponents. So let's zoom in here on example 1. And we can practice our other exponent rules here because we know that when the exponents are stacked up like this, we multiply them. So this would be x to the 3 times 0 which is x to the 0, any number to the 0 power equals 1. On number 2, we have all of this huge fraction, but it's all being raised to the 0 power. And yes, believe it or not, this all equals 1, because anything to the 0 power equals 1. On number 3, we have this first exponent, x to the 0 power, that equals 1, and then we have the plus 2, and of course we know that 1 plus 2 equals 3. Here we have um, something getting a little bit more complicated. What you have to recognize here is that this 0 is only on the x. It's not on the 3, because the x and the 3 are not connected together. And the rule with exponents is it's only on the base that it's right next to. So we know that this is going to be a 3, and it's times x to the 0 power. Well, x to the 0 power is 1. So 3 times 1 is 3. On number 5, we're going to use some of the rules that we learned before to put this cube on every base in this parentheses. And so the 2 is going to get the cube, the x to the fifth, and the y to the 0 are each going to get a cube. So we'll rewrite it as 2 cubed, x to the fifth cubed, y to the zero cubed. And then we'll uh, simplify those. Well, 2 cubed makes 8. x to the fifth cubed, we're going to use our rule that says when we have the exponents stacked up on each other, we multiply them. That will be x to the 15. And the same rule applies here, but 0 times 3 is 0. So we still have this y to the 0 power here, which we can simplify because any number to the 0 power equals 1. So we have 8x to the 15 times 1. And we can simplify that a little bit further because that 1 and that 8 would normally get multiplied together, but 8 times 1 is still 8. So 8x to the 15 power. Okay, for number six, we're going to first look at all of this in the parentheses has a zero on it. So you can, you can put the zero on everything, and you're going to see that it's going to turn everything into one. Five to the zero power is one. A to the fifth to the zero power is A to the zero, because five times zero is zero. So A to the zero is another one, so that would be times one. And then the B is going to be b cubed. 
to the zero power, which again would be b to the zero, which is just one. So we have one times one times one makes one. So all of this, because it had that zero on the outside, turned into one. And you could have skipped all of this if you knew that already, but I was showing you anyway. So here we have this parentheses now where the four, the a to the six, and the b zero, and the zero is only on the b here. So we have a four and an a to the six, and the b to the zero turns into a one there. Well, in this, we would multiply these coefficients together. One times four times four is four, and we have an a to the six. So this becomes four a to the six. All right, at the top of this page, we have a new rule. Three squared over three to the sixth. When we write this out, three squared is two threes multiplied together. Three to the sixth is six threes. And when we look at those reducing, we're left with three to the fourth power in the denominator and a one in the numerator. This becomes one over three to the fourth power. However, if we look here, by using the subtraction rule, the base is three and then two minus six gives us three to the negative four power. Turns out that one over three to the fourth is the same as three to the negative fourth power. A negative exponent means the reciprocal of the base. The reciprocal of three is the fraction form of three, which is three over one, turned upside down. So the reciprocal of three is one third. And that's where you can see the one third coming up with the fourth power. So if we turn a base into its reciprocal, the exponent can change sign. So instead of having a three, we have a one third, and instead of having a negative four, we have four. These are equal. In this class, Developmental Two, we practice writing our expressions with only positive exponents, so we would always want to simplify this negative exponent into this form with a positive exponent. Uh, if we look further on down here, we have an example. The base here is two. We can get the exponent by subtracting three minus nine. We get two to the negative six. We're gonna to wanna to simplify that because we want our exponent to be positive. So the negative exponent means take the reciprocal of the base. Well, two is two over one, so its reciprocal is one half. So this will turn into one half to the sixth power. The other way to do this, and sometimes I like to do this a little bit more like this because you can avoid the negative exponents by thinking about this as being just reducing a fraction. Let's see, we have nine twos on the bottom. That would be nine twos. Okay. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so we know that these will reduce, and you can see that we have six twos, two to the sixth power left, but they're in the denominator of the fraction. If you think about this like reducing, you can avoid the this step in here with a negative exponent and just go straight from the fraction to the, the new fraction that would have a positive exponent. But you're free to do it either way. So we're going to practice negative exponents on this page. And you can see the rule up here. B to the negative one, or any base to a negative exponent, is the same as the reciprocal of that base to a positive exponent. And you don't see the positive one here because it's implied to be there. So six to the negative three power. First, we need the reciprocal of six is one sixth. And then the exponent changes to a positive three. So this is equal to one over six to the third power. All right, this time it looks like we have a fraction already as the base. This fraction has a negative exponent on it, but the negative exponent doesn't mean put it in a fraction, it means take the reciprocal. So what is the reciprocal? The reciprocal of one seventh is seven or seven over one. So this negative exponent on the one seventh is gonna make this change to a to a whole number, seven, and that makes the exponent change to positive. And of course, we know seven squared is seven times seven, or 49. 
We don't always simplify these, but we do. If we can, we do. All right, and number three. Now, we might want to refer back to numbers one and two while we're looking at this. If you look at these, numbers one and two, you can see that when we have a whole number with a negative exponent, that number turned into the denominator of a fraction. When we had the denominator with a negative exponent, it turned into a whole number or it came to the top of the fraction. So when we have a whole bunch of bases, like in number three, mixed up in the fraction, to turn the exponents positive, we just need to move them. If it's negative on the top, it'll be positive on the bottom or in the denominator. If it's negative in the denominator, it'll be positive up in the numerator. So the exponents will change sign as you move them from top to bottom. So that can help us decide how to simplify this kind of an expression. This base of x has a negative exponent on it. So if I move it down here to the denominator, the exponent will change positive. This base of z has a negative exponent. So if I move it up here to the numerator, the exponent turns positive. And then we have this y to talk about. that already has a positive exponent. If I put this y down here on the bottom, the exponent becomes negative. I don't want to do that. I want to leave it positive. So I'm going to leave it up here on the top. So this becomes y to the fifth. And this is an okay answer. I might just rearrange these because y becomes comes before z alphabetically. And this would probably be a more common way to write this, but this is not wrong. It's just this is more common. All right, in number four, we're going to do all the same things we just did in number three. It's just more of it. So I'm going to start with a fraction bar. Let's move this over a little bit. Let's start with a fraction bar so we can decide uh, whether we need to move things to the top or bottom. All right, the coefficient is a negative three. The exponent on this is one, not negative one. This negative doesn't do anything, doesn't have anything to do with exponents or moving top to bottom. So this negative three already has a positive exponent, so we will leave the negative three where it is. The x to the fifth already has a positive exponent, so we will leave it also there. The y negative squared has a negative exponent, so we should move it down to the bottom so that the exponent can change its sign or turn positive. The z negative cubed, same thing. We'll move it down to the bottom so the exponent can change its sign and it will become z positive cubed. And that took care of the whole numerator of this fraction. So let's look at the denominator. The x has a negative exponent, so we're going to want to put it up to the top, the numerator, and the exponent will change positive. The y has a negative exponent. We'll move it up here. So the y can have a new positive exponent. The z already has a positive exponent, so we don't want to move it so we'll leave the z here with its positive exponent of 4. That's the first step. The next step is to go ahead and simplify some of these uh, bases because we can put these two x's together, and we can put these two z's together, we can put these two y's together. Um, the negative 3 is not doing anything. It doesn't have anything to reduce with. All right, let's put these x's together. This is multiply, so the shortcut for multiply is to add the exponents. So when you add the 5 and the 2, you get 7. So this is x to the 7. Same thing happens with these z's. The shortcut is to add the exponents. So this becomes uh, z to the 7. 3 plus 4 makes 7, those exponents. This y is reducing. The shortcut is to subtract them. But if you think about it, you have four y's on the top, two y's on the bottom. Two of them are going to reduce. You'll have two left over on the top. So we'll have y squared on the top. 